I gotta go to town in a little bit and pick some things up. Oh, I can go. I'm not doing anything today. Why don't we go together? Luca Guadagnino's 2017 film, Call Me By Your Name, is one of the better films to come out of the late 2010s. It's really a beautifully crafted film with an exceptional and minimalistic plot hedged on its gorgeous yet simple cinematography and soundtrack, something akin to Eric Romer's A Summer's Tale. But what Call Me By Your Name does best is use all those elements of filmmaking to create an enriching and fulfilling cinematic experience. Many films attempt to create this type of atmosphere, yet very few succeed in doing so. It leaves a staying power making them iconic. Films like Chunking Express and The Shining are two films that balance their filmmaking so well that they go beyond the film's zeitgeist and become more of a cultural phenomenon. One of Call Me Name's better scenes that show this staying power is this one around the first third of the film. Hold for a second, wait. This is the film's first major turning point in which both Elio and Oliver confront each other about their relationship, but through coded messages, better known as subtext. And with it being in the 80s, such topics were always going to be hidden in plain sight. There are three story beats that happen throughout the scene. The icebreaker, the conflict, and the resolution. The icebreaker being the arrival in the town, where there's small talk between the two regarding Oliver smoking. I thought you didn't smoke. I don't. And the World War I statue. The ignition of discussion. So World War II, huh? Oh, uh, no, this is World War I. Oh. You have to be at least 80 years old to have known any of them. But then... Well, you seem to know more than anybody else around here. Well, if you only knew how little I know about the things that matter. Now that we're well into dialogue, we go on to the main driver of conflict in Elio, who confesses to Oliver, but listen to carefully as he's not outright saying how he feels, which aligns with what we know about the character currently, someone who's inexperienced. Oliver picks up on it and responds accordingly. What things that matter? Now that we know that the characters are on the same page, let's watch a scene play out. You know what things? Why are you telling me this? Because I thought you should know. Because you thought I should know? Because I wanted you to know? Because I wanted you to know. Because I wanted you to know. Now you may have noticed that this all happens in one continuous shot, and it actually helps the scene execute its purpose more. Imagine for a moment if this scene had been cut to where the transitional periods from point A to point B to point C were removed. The scene and its purpose wouldn't be fully realized. With it being a 4 minute scene, we get engulfed with the atmosphere of northern Italy in the 80s. Supplementing this atmosphere are beautiful visuals from long to medium shots and a phenomenal score. All of this gives a sense of saturation, nostalgia, and longing, which can be said about how Elio feels at this point in the film. That sense of longing both Elio and the audience are feeling right now gets crushed as we hit the third story beat, the resolution of the scene. Where at this moment, Elio gets shut down by Oliver regarding the topic, and both bike away. Shouldn't have said anything. Just pretend you never did. Or does that mean we're on speaking terms but not really? It means we can't talk about those kinds of things. Okay? Now both start the scene on positive terms, and both end it on negative terms. The cinematography and sound design evoke similar feelings as does the driver in conflict in Elio, and does so in a way that it leaves us, the audience, wanting more, yet fulfilled in what we've seen so far, the turning point in the story. Hey. Andiamo, l'americano! 